Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today IGCSE. This video is a tutorial on Biology, Paper 6, Variant 6-2 for October-November 2023 examinations. Question 1. Students investigated the effect of temperature on the activity of amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of starch to form reducing sugars. The student uses this method. I won't be reading all the steps to you, so you can pause this video and read the step-by-step -step method in performing this experiment. To simplify the experiment for you, basically you have got two test tubes W and test tube C that is mixed with 2% of amylase and starch solution. And then it is placed in two different beakers which is beaker W of warm water and beaker C of cold water. The purpose of this experiment is to see how different temperatures will affect the enzyme activity of amylase. To test that, we are going to use iodine solution and spot the color change. So these are the results of the investigation shown in figure 1.2. Just remember that if there is presence of starch, the iodine will remain blue-black. And if there is no starch, the iodine will turn yellow-brown. W here is the result of the test being done in a warm water. And C here is the result for the investigation being done in cold water. As you can see in warm water, it only takes the second dimple to show a yellow-brown color, meaning that there is no starch present. Whereas in cold water, it takes after 5 dimple at the 6 dimple to notice no starch present. So the amylase took a longer time in cold water to break down the starch completely into maltose. Question A, Part 1. Prepare a table and record the results shown in Figure 1.2. So let's see the variables that we have here. We are going to compare between warm water and cold water and then write down the number of dimples which shows blue-black color and yellow-brown color. So the number of dimples in test tube W which has blue-black color is only 1. And the yellow-brown color was found in the number of dimples 2 to 6. Whereas in test tube C, the number of dimples that showed blue-black color was 1 to 5 and the number of dimples that showed yellow-brown color was 6. Part 2. State a conclusion for the results shown in figure 1.2. So this is pretty straightforward. As mentioned previously, when the temperature was higher, it took a shorter time to show that there were no longer starch present in the solution meaning that the enzyme activity was higher. Question part 3. State the independent variable in this investigation. Independent variable is the variable that is being changed in the investigation and we use two different beakers here. And what was being changed in the experiment is that one was tested with warm water and the other with cold water. So that would be the temperature. Next, part 4 state three variables that were kept constant in this investigation. There were several things that were kept constant in this investigation. For instance, the number drops of iodine solution initially into all the dimples, the volume of amylase being used in all the test tubes, and also the concentration was the same. We also tested it with the same enzyme of amylase in both experiments. The volume of start solution was the same and all these droplets were inserted at the same interval, which is 30 seconds. You can choose any three of these to obtain a complete full mark. Question B, Part 1. Explain why the method used in this investigation does not allow the students to obtain an accurate time for the breakdown of starch. So we can tell that the starch has completely breakdown when the color changes from blue-black to yellow-brown. And this happens in 30 second interval. So this is difficult to judge because the color change might have happened in the interval of 10 seconds or 50 seconds. So we will not be able to obtain an accurate time for the breakdown of starch. Part 2. The temperature of the water in the beakers during the investigation was a source of error. Describe how you could improve the method to reduce this error. This is quite a common source of error in biology experiments. To prevent this, we could insulate the beaker, use a thermostatically controlled water bath, or use a Bunsen burner with a thermometer placed inside to monitor the temperature. Part 3. The test tubes were left in the beakers of warm or cold water for 3 minutes in step 7 and step 12 before the amylase solution was poured into the starch suspension. Explain why the test tubes were left in the beakers for 3 minutes. 
This was done to equilibrate the temperature of the amylase solution inside the test tubes so that the temperature of the solution will be the same as the temperature of the water in the beaker. Question 2, Part A. Milk contains fats. The enzyme lipase catalyzes the breakdown of fats to form fatty acid and glycerol. The fatty acid causes the pH of the milk to decrease. Plan an investigation to determine the effect of lipase concentration on the breakdown of fats in milk. And they give you 6 marks for this question. Planning an investigation question can be a little bit difficult, but with lots of practice, you'll be able to get a gist of it and I will try my best to guide you with a technique to plan an investigation. The first thing that you should do always is identify your independent and dependent variables. I like to use the keyword I don't care to help me remember the variables that I need to look for. The independent variable here is what is being changed. And what is being changed is the lipase concentration. And next is your dependent variable. Dependent variable is what is being measured. We are looking to measure the breakdown of fats in milk. And it mentions here that when the fat breaks down, it will form fatty acid. And this fatty acid that is being formed will cause the pH to decrease. So we are going to measure the pH value in this experiment. And always remember that you must have a constant variable in order to keep the experiment fair. We should be using the same volume of milk, the same volume of lipase, and ensure that the temperature of milk is the same. Now, after identifying your variables, we are going to move on to the experimental procedures. The idea here is that you need to understand what has to go on in your experiment. Since we are looking to measure the pH value of the breakdown of fat in milk, we shall first prepare a beaker of milk. And we are performing this experiment at different concentration of lipase. So we are going to add lipase into the milk to break down the fat in the milk. And once it has formed fatty acid, we are going to use a universal indicator to observe the color change to measure its pH value. Once you have listed down your variables and understand the experimental procedures, you can start writing down the points. You should always suggest an appropriate number and range of values for the independent variable. In your dependent variable, you have said that we are going to look for pH value. So make sure you include how you are going to measure the pH value, which is by using a universal indicator. Okay, let's write down that first. So as you can see, I have suggested an appropriate concentration for the independent variable and added an appropriate technique to measure the pH. Next, you're always going to repeat the experiment using different independent variable. Once you're done with this, you can list down all the constant variable that you should keep the same in order for the experiment to be fair. Always be sure to mention at least two constant variables. Next, you should always identify risk and suggest safety precautions if applicable to the experiment. So for this experiment, in order to be safe, we can wear goggles and gloves. So these are some of the guidelines that you could use to plan your investigation. Question B. The emulsion test is used to test a sample of food for fat. Describe the method you would use to do the emulsion test. This is under the chapter of Biological Molecule Food Test. You should know that to do the emulsion test, you're going to add ethanol. So we can add ethanol and then water into the test tube containing the food sample and then gently shake the tube and observe the changes. Question 3. Figure 3.1 is a photograph of a type of seaweed called bladder rack. The bladders help the seaweed to float in water. Question A Part 1. Draw a large diagram of the bladder rack seaweed shown in figure 3.1. This type of question is always asked in your paper 6 biology. You are given a very large space to draw your diagram over here and 4 marks for this. So your drawing should generally be bigger than the diagram that is being given over here. Use your pencil and outline this only in single line and make sure there is no shading. Make sure to include all the details that you see in the diagram. Over here you can see that there are also lines that is branching in so make sure to include that as well. So this is how I would draw it. If your diagram is larger in size than original you will get your first mark. Make sure that you are drawing it with only a single clear line with no shading. Single clear line meaning that when you draw the outline, it shouldn't be looking something like this lines. And finally, moving on into the details, make sure you have a total of 7 bladders drawn and the central midrib is shown in your diagram. 
Next, part 2. Line PQ on figure 3.1 represents the length of one bladder on the bladder rack seaweed. The actual length of the bladder is 19 mm. Measure the length of line PQ on figure 3.1. I have obtained a measurement of 1.2 cm. However, we are required to give our answer in millimeters. To convert centimeter to millimeters, we have to multiply by 10. So that would be 12 millimeters. Next, calculate the magnification of the photograph using the formula and your measurement. And the formula of magnification has been given over here. You are required to give your answer to two decimal places. Okay, this is pretty simple. So the length of line PQ was 12 millimeters, and the actual length was already given, which is 19 millimeters. And in your calculator, you will get a value of 06315. You have to give your answer in two decimal place. So the final answer would be 0 0.63. Part 3. Seaweeds are species of algae that live in the sea. Figure 3.2 shows photographs of bladder rack, this, and a different species of seaweed called egg rack, this one. The photographs are of the same magnification. State two ways visible in figure 3.2 that bladder rack is different from egg rack. Okay, so from what we can observe here in this figure is that there are more bladders present in the bladder rack compared to the egg racks. And then the bladder rack are also closer to each other compared to the egg rack which are further apart. And there are also bladders on both sides of the meat rib. And the bladder rack are also bigger compared to the egg rack. So you can write as many differences as you can see in your answer space. Next, question B. Bladder rack is found on the seashore and is exposed to the air when it is not covered by water at certain times of day. Students investigated how rapidly bladder rack lost water. They used this method below. You can pause this video and read the step-by-step -step method. Suggest two variables that the students should keep constant during their investigation to ensure that the results are valid. In this investigation, they are looking to find how fast the water is being lost and tissue was being used to remove any water on the surface of the seaweed and then they were hung from a piece of string. So we have to ensure that there are no external factors such as a windy day that could affect the water being dry faster or that the temperature was higher or even the humidity of the environment is low or high. We should also make sure that the samples of bladder rack collected has the same surface area as this could affect the rate of evaporation. There are many other variables that you should keep constant. If you want me to check your answer, if it's right or wrong, you can leave it in the comment section below. Next, table 3.1 shows the initial masses recorded by the students and the final masses recorded after 5 hours. Part 2, one of the final masses recorded is anomalous. State what is meant by an anomalous result. As you can see here, these are the initial masses of the bladder rack which are pretty much the same. And the mean average is 176. And then the final masses of bladder was 82, 144 and 70. And the mean was 76. As you can see, these two values are pretty much the same. However, this value here has quite a significant difference with sample 1 and 3. So this here is your anomalous result, which means that it is a result that does not fit the pattern or the trend of the current values. Part 3. Describe how the students calculated the mean value for the final mass of the bladder rack. So if you've taken maths, you should know how to calculate a mean value. A mean value will be obtained by adding the sum of all the samples and then dividing it by 3. Since there is an anomalous result here, we will not be including sample 2. So we will only take sample 1 and 2, add them together and divide it by 2 instead. Next part 4, using the information in table 3.1, calculate the mean percentage decrease in the mass of the bladder rack samples after 5 hours and give your answer to two significant figures. To calculate the mean percentage decrease, we will first calculate the percentage decrease for sample 1 and sample 3. Since sample 2 had an anomalous result, we will ignore sample 2. To calculate the percentage decrease of sample 1, we are going to take the initial mass minus the final mass over the initial mass and multiply it by 100%, giving us 53.93%. And we will repeat the same step for sample 3, which is 58.08%. Now to calculate the mean percentage difference, we're going to add up the percentage decrease of sample 1 and 2 and then divide it by 2. And you will get 56%. 
Since they ask you to leave your answers in two significant figures, this will be your final answer. Question C. The students repeated their investigation using egg rack seaweed. Table 3.2 shows the mean percentage decrease in the mass of the egg rack samples throughout the investigation. So in this column, we've got the time in minutes from 30 to 300 minutes and the mean percentage decrease from 0 until 51. Using the data in Table 3.2, plot a line graph on the grid to show the effect of time on the mean percentage decrease in the mass of the egg rack. So the first thing we're going to do is label our axis X and Y. If you don't know what should go on your X and Y axis, you can draw the letter D and I and use how the letter falls on the axis as your guideline. So the time in minutes is being changed here. So this here is your independent variable and you're measuring the main percentage difference which is the dependent variable. Now we're going to plot the scale on our axis. You have got six boxes on your x-axis and the range of x-axis is between 30 minutes to 300 minutes. So the highest range is 300 minutes and if I divided it equally into six boxes, I will get 50 minutes for each box. And next for the y-axis is the mean percentage decrease. The range here is from 0 to 51. And we have six boxes here. If I increase my range up to 60 and divide this to six boxes, I would get 10 for each boxes. Okay, once we have labeled the axis, we can plot the points from your table into the graph. Once you have plotted your points, you can draw a line that connect all the points in your graph. And this is what my graph looks like. Make sure that the axis of your graphs are properly labeled. Use a pencil to plot your points. Your points should be clearly marked with an X. And lastly, make sure you occupy more than half of the grid. Question D. Many people eat seaweed. State the names of the regions that can be used to test seaweed for protein and vitamin C. You are tested again with the theory of the syllabus. And if you don't know your syllabus theory, you can always refer to the course specification. Make sure you're looking at the right one. I will include the link to this in the description box below. If you go to chapter 4, you will see all the food tests that you need to know. For proteins, you're going to use a burette test. And for vitamin C, it will be a DCPIP test. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching, guys. For the next video, I will be discussing on physics paper 2. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe.